number one, doesn't need to reflect in your specific process. So it's your job to identify the two, three, four stocks of the day that you possibly can have good value. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the markets. Um, this week, this past week was a shortened week. Uh, obviously we were off on President's Day. Uh, a lot of people probably felt like it was probably one of the longest weeks in a while, just because if you watch the videos, uh, just for the, all this past week, we talked about distribution. Again, for all you guys who are just joining us uh, for the first time, uh, distribution is, is a very, very ugly, uh, ugly word uh, in the trader's vocabulary. Uh, for those who don't know what that means, it's basically buyers and sellers trying to seize control of the macro picture. And when you look at a linear market like we've been having now, uh, for the last, you can make an even argument for the last four and a half years, uh, you know, from the from the Trump administration to kindly currently where we are today, you can make an argument that the market has been incredibly resilient, factual stats, despite a global pandemic and all that good stuff. But eventually, like everything else, buyers get tired when the market continues to go up linear. And the way markets get tired of selling, for example, during the uh, 19, uh, excuse me, in the 2008 uh, mortgage mess, sellers got tired as well, right? So by 2009, there was a generational bottom. So markets don't really need a reason to kind of stop. But through all that comes something called distribution. The distribution, again, is the seizing of control of buyers and sellers. Uh, this usually has about, uh, you know, three to four times a year, once every uh, quarter or so, that things kind of come to a stall in the big tech world, right? In the big tech universe, uh, stocks in general that are not, quote unquote, the high flying uh, PR names that a lot of people uh, are chasing. And they're basically in that little window of about a week or so that they can't get going, or some people will call that the chop. Um, so Tuesday, we started the session. Tuesday was a very, very uh, good or organic session. Again, if you guys have been watching the video for the last uh, two weeks or so. Um, I've been kind of sell bias on Tesla, not because I don't love the company. I don't think the stock's going to zero. Uh, I love the company. I love the stock. I trade it both ways. But, you know, we've been talking about this kind of rolling top for a while. And last week, we finally started breaking down below this 800 level, breaking down below the 780 level, and finally got the move down uh, all the way to 760, which obviously now becomes a very, very big uh, line in the sand. So um, Tuesday was good. Uh, Wednesday was fine. There was nothing wrong with fries. Uh, you know, we're pretty decent pivots. Uh, but what we started seeing by like Wednesday afternoon, channels were really contracting. And you know, for, for a name, for example, that would have uh, an eight dollar range for the day, all of a sudden was putting in a three dollar range for a stock that, uh, for example, like a, a Netflix that would have an eleven dollar range for the day, would have a four dollar range. And we started seeing these channels contract. And the one thing that I've always talked about over and over in nausea that, again, the market is open. Every single stock trades. We talked about this on uh, Thursday's video. Every stock trades. Every stock is open for business. Every stock is going to make a move, but not every single stock is tradable. And 99% of the market who is trading throughout the day is not in tradable form. And that 1% that is tradable, number one, doesn't need to reflect in your specific process. So it's your job to identify the two, three, four stocks of the day that you possibly can trade and have a good value. And that's where Thursday came along. Uh, Thursday, there just wasn't any value. And this was the first time on Thursday's session that I could remember just sitting there the whole day and not putting on a single trade. And I, I've always maintained this fact, the market's open, that's great, but it doesn't give you a right to kind of put your chips in the table unless you're getting premium hand. If you don't have a premium hand, don't trade that day. There's always going to be value. Maybe the next day, the, the day after that. And Thursday was the first session. Uh, in, in, I mean, I can't even remember how long that I sat there and pretty much was a statue. Did not put on a single trade. And a lot of people, especially when you're a new trader, will, will look at that and, and be like, wow, that's crazy. You know, that's a that's a you know, that's a 
Um, you know, that, that's a, a position of weakness, and it's not. That's a position of strength. That's a position of maturity. Um, the only time that you have the right to kind of sit on the sidelines when the market is not spotlighting your process or spotlighting the stocks that you trade uh, in the direction of that day. Because again, no day is going to make your career. You know, you could have that one generational trade that will make you a lot of money. And it's like, again, it's like hitting Powerball, right? You can only hit Powerball or, or hit the lotto or hit, even hit uh, big at the blackjack table. It's not going to really impact your future. It might make you monetary hold for the time being or a short term, short term interval in your life, but it's not going to set you up for life. So I've always maintained that no trading day is ever going to define your life. Make you happy, yes. Um, make you, you know, make you uh, feel a little bit better at night, absolutely. But there's a better, high probability chance that an individual day is always going to make you uh, is always going to set you back, mentally torture you, deflate your um, your your ability to to have confidence. And that's what we drive. We drive on confidence. We drive on process. And once I started seeing that there was no value for me on Thursday, I completely stopped. And I was completely right because that distribution channel, that shop factor that a lot of people call it, really came into effect. And I, I think I've, I've never been so proud. I, I, I've, I've gotten, I always get tons of emails uh, throughout the day. And there's, you know, usually the days that you have this really, uh, you know, tremendous value in the markets and you got one pivot going up $6, one pivot going up $8, whatever the case may be. But I can't tell you how many people I got emails from from Thursday and Friday sessions saying, oh, my God, I can't believe I had the ability to actually sit there and not do anything. And that is a great step of maturity. That is exactly what you need to, to really extend your shelf life as a trader. If you get if you if you're in the social media mentality that believe that every single day you open up your computer and there's 36 stocks to trade, you're going to be. You can, you're, number one, you're misformed. You're misinformed. That's number one. Number two, there's not. Those, not. those stocks that are running all over the place, you lost value because the stocks already made their moves. And guys, remember, just as, a, just as kind of as a tip, and I know a lot of you guys are on social media, by the time you see somebody talk about a stock on social media, you missed your entry, right? That's, it's, these are facts. You missed your entry. The stock is in the middle of its channel, whether you're trading uh, a mega cap, high beta name like I usually trade or the smaller names, whatever the case may be. As soon as you see something uh, posted on social media, I don't care what site it is, you missed your entry. You are chasing the interval, whether it's long or short. And sometimes you'll make money and sometimes you won't. But that's a 50-50 proposition. If you, if you put in the time and actually look through the charts, you can find that chart. You could find that gem before it makes that move, before somebody's putting it on social media. You don't need to ask somebody, where do you see the stock going? All you need to do is look at a chart in the same way that you have the ability to look at somebody's tweet and look and say, oh my God, the stock is moving. You had the, the same ability the night before to put in the research to find that stock before it moved. Again, we're not looking for the hot stock. You know, we're looking for the chart that if it confirms becomes quote unquote hot. And so by the time that you guys are seeing it on social media, the move is gone. You missed your entry. You're in the middle of the cycle. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. So for all you guys who are so in love uh, with the social media celebrities and this, that, and so forth, you know, do the work, you know, do the work. There's no cut corners. Make sure you're putting in the time, especially this weekend. In the Northeast, there's like 65 feet of snow. My backyard looks like, uh, like, looks like, like a ski lift. It's terrible. So you have all this time. It's zero degrees outside. Put in the work. Spend a couple of hours back testing. Spend some time charting. You'll see some value. And for all you guys who did email me on Thursday, I, again, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of you guys because, it, again, you didn't need to put your chips on the table with a 2-7 offsuit. You didn't need to... Uh, put yourself in a situation that you are trading with a hopes and a prayer that your trade works. The value is gone. The channels are shrinking. The channels were contracting. And always remember, and this is and this is something for that you could take away from for the rest of your trading career. Uh, doesn't matter how long you choose it to last. There's always better value in other days. You don't need to cram everything in one day. You don't need to cram everything in one hour. If you're looking for a long lasting career, 10, 20, 30, 50 years, always think of the long game. And Thursday, it was the first time in years I sat there. I said, look, I'm not playing this 2-7 offsuit. There's nothing that I wanted. Uh, there's nothing that I need to trade. And again, I get it, right? People wake up, especially in your first couple of years, you wake up 
I'm dying to trade. Is it Monday yet? All that crap. It doesn't work that way. Everybody who's been trading for a long time understands it doesn't work that way. You're delusional. You're, you're, you're living that euphoria honeymoon stage that you have in the market thinking that this is uh, some, something normal and it's not. Um, get to work. Think of the long game and always measure yourself against yourself. Again, you'll never emulate another trader. You'll never duplicate results of another trader. You'll never be another trader because everybody's built completely different and it's all about your personal growth. So the idea that you have to trade is, 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 is false. It's a myth. You don't need to trade because the market's open. You need to trade because you're getting value. And Friday came along and it was night and day, right? It was absolutely night and day. So, you know, 15, 20 years ago, a day like Thursday, I would have completely brushed off as another normal session. I would have chopped myself up. I would have been mentally broken for Friday session and I would have missed the value. And if you look at Thursday versus Friday, it was night and day. You did get value. Uh, you had value in beta. You had value in SPACs. You had value in small cap um, option order flow. And that's kind of what you need. You're waiting for those whole cards. You're waiting for those premium cards. So the day, the day and the week actually ended off uh, you know, very solid, right? Really, really solid. Uh, and going into next week, you, you know, you have to start thinking about what happens next. So let's talk about what happens next here. So we have the cues. We've seen uh, the weakness in the market now uh, for a pretty long time in the tech space. One day you'll have Amazon really showing leadership, uh, resilience, doing absolutely great things. And then the next day, Right, the next day, out of nowhere, we'll 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 take a we'll we'll take a nosedive, which is very very remarkable considering how really good that channel was. And again, it really did show you how weak uh, the tape and technology really is. Uh, you have Tesla, right? For, you know, for the last three weeks or so, is just putting in this rolling top. Again, we've talked about these levels in nausea, and now we have a very definitive level to the downside uh, of Tesla coming up here, which, which which again we'll talk about throughout the week. But the point is, you see the weakness. You see the buyers being tired. And then, does it mean the stock is going to go to six fifty? Of course not. It's it's absolutely to it's absolutely naive to believe that you know what, what's going to happen with the stock before it starts confirming levels. Here's the level here to the up, upside here for for the bulls to kind of reclaim a little bit of control. And here's the level to the downside that the bears, if they continue to climb, they start to. Uh, really take control of Tesla, blow this channel. Then you have a lot of room to talk about uh, Amazon as well. You know, earnings are out of uh, earnings are, are completely out of the the equation now. The only thing that I think uh, can save this thing till next quarter for doing something at least right is a stock split. I think everybody has been talking about that split. I don't know where it started from. I'm running with it just like everybody else. But let's be honest, this stock really needs something to wake it up. It's in its dead channel here. It's doing absolutely nothing. It gives you like three days a quarter uh, to, to get something out of this thing and then falls right back here. So it's absolutely doing um, nothing. Uh, Facebook, uh, which I caught Friday pretty well. Um, you know, again, you know, here you had the big move up on earnings, came back down here. It's st still sitting in this really, really ugly channel. But you can see the weakness developing in a lot of these names uh, as well. Alibaba had that one, two day run, kind of came back right into the channel. So distribution is here. The channels are tight. And if you are strictly a mega cap uh, trader, you've seen this. You're witnessing this. You're, you're you know, you're frustrated. And this is why we've been saying now for, you know, for two, three months now, you, you have to kind of conform to where the market is right now, you know, with the SPAC names, you know, names like, for example, like a PSAC that I still really, really like. I'm waiting for this channel to confirm uh, a name like BWN that, you know, kind of really is ready to go. You know, this thing is ready to go. GSAH, uh, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. You know, we have this thing as a, as a pivot on Friday. The SPACs are where the money is right now. And you can you can turn around and say, oh, it's just not, it's it's not nonsense. It, it really is. The, the only nonsense is is, is sitting there pretending they don't exist and not participating. It's not like you're chasing these things from $10 to 30. There's a lot of names just coming out of channels, 10, 11, $12 that you could take, you know, you could take participation in. And again, not all of them are great, but the point is there is some value outside of technology. And the longer technology continues to sit in this range, and instead of fighting, you know, for, you know, instead of fighting uh, Netflix for a dollar, $2, you could be looking at other names 
that are working very, very well. And, and to the flip side as well, there's a lot of names that are starting to break down as well. Uh, look at a name like Akamai, right? A name that usually I wouldn't, you know, you usually look at, but you could see the directional bias. You could see this mega channel it's playing on. If the, if the market continues to kind of deteriorate and technology continues to be, I don't want to use the word soul, but not in favor, you're going to want to look at names that are consolidating to the downside. Like look at Akamai, you know, this thing is literally, it's, it's been in this channel now for a week. If this thing starts confirming down, this thing's gonna get hit. Uh, a stock like uh, Monster, right? You can see it, you know, it's coming down in this channel here. And if it starts clearing out this channel, there's a lot of room down as well. So there is value in this tape, but unfortunately, you have to really wait for it now, especially to the downside, especially if the market continues to be a buyer's strike in a lot of these names, you have to be you have to be mature enough to say to yourself, well, maybe today I'm not going to trade, but if this thing sets up tomorrow, I'll have a premium session. Uh, I might not put on the five, 10 trades that I'm usually uh, ready to go. And again, I don't put on 10 trades, but if, you know, if I'm putting on three to five trades a day, and that's my value. Maybe the next day, you know, maybe I'll get one. You know, maybe I'll get two. And maybe just like Thursday, I'll have to sit it out just to get a little bit more data so I can have a premium day for the next session. So this is a new market, right? This is a, a more adult market. This is a market now that you have to be a little bit more reserved. This is a market now that is completely different than, you know, 15, 20 years ago where everything, there was an opportunity every single day. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but, but let's be honest, for most of us, we're not computers, we're not geniuses, we're not rock stars, we're not social media celebrities. We have to put in the work to kind of wait for our things uh, to play out in front of us. And whether you're trading uh, some $2 stocks or you're trading Amazon, you know, you have to wait for that green light because if you don't, you will get chopped up. You will get uh, frustrated. But most important thing is you'll start seeing your account bleed little by little every single day. And one paper cut is fine. Two per paper cuts is fine. But if you go two, three weeks with paper cuts, then that starts turning into a severed head. And that's the last thing uh, that you want to avoid. So going into this week, um, you know, here's the levels that, I, that I'm, I'm definitely, definitely watching. And I think this is going to correlate uh, with a lot of the mega cap, uh, big cap names, right? So you have the cues here. I think you need a 34 reclaim for the bulls, right? I, it's pretty obvious here. It got rejected uh, 33.86 here. Uh, Friday got rejected at 33.99. So let's just call it 34. The cues need to reclaim 34. If the cues reclaim 34, I think you'll have a pretty good aggressive channel to trade on, especially if you guys are trading on the option side. Uh, any reclaiming close. Uh, on the daily chart of the Q's 334, then you have a channel all the way up to the 340, 341 Bollinger Band. That's a good thing, right? It's a really good, aggressive, clean channel. However, there's a flip side to that. Uh, if you see the lows on Thursday, they were uh, 328, right? You see this 328 level? Any close below 328 on the Q's, then you have this channel all the way to the downside, first stop 324, and if things start getting really, really aggressive, because at the end of the day, remember, we're in a four and a half year linear market. You're telling me the market can't get down to back to this 305 level? Of course it can. I'm not saying it will, but at least let's be prepared for it. So uh, any close above 334 is bullish. Any close below 328 uh, is a sell signal. If you look at the Russell, again, this has been a very, very big catalyst. A lot of the names uh, that you guys have been um, looking at and seeing some really big heavy winners throughout the uh, throughout the last few months. They've been demonstrated and they've been respected on this IWM level. And, and here's the chart. You know, here's basically what you need to happen uh, for the Russell. Uh, the Russell needs to close and remount uh, above this uh, 226, 227 level to maybe get an extension point back to 233. However, there's a flip side of that as well. Uh, any close below 218 on the Russell, and then you have a lot of room all the way down to the 15-day moving average of 207. So you have the levels. They're set. Uh, same thing with uh, the SPX. Uh, you know, same thing here. He's gotten rejected here a couple of times on the five-day supply. There's, there's no big warning signals yet on the SPX, but for the bulls to get really constructive, you need a remount of uh, the 39, 34 level to close above to start a next leg higher. And if the bears take control, any close below uh, 38.60, I think is a sell signal. It's a very, very aggressive sell signal all the way to the 50 day moving average. Um, I do believe though, we will probably have one, based on the charts, I, I went through a lot of charts uh, over the weekend, based on a lot of charts, I, I don't expect any significant expansion 
uh, coming Monday. But we're very, very close just because a lot of names, even if they don't expand, whether it's upside or downside, on Monday, we're getting very, very close of stocks that are at least at the bottom of the channel, and they're maybe a day away either confirming down or reclaiming short-term uh, supply and starting moving up. So we might be one or two day away from kind of getting out of the distribution tight channels, but when we do, there's gonna be a very clean break either back to the upside or to the downside. So let me talk about some names that I do like uh, for uh, Monday's session. First and foremost, for all you guys who are trading uh, on the option side, uh, if you guys noticed, uh, I've been posting a lot, especially on my Twitter account. I don't put it on my Twitter feed. Um, we've been doing very, very well with small cap, uh, near term, out of the money uh, call bets. So for example, if you guys watched uh, last week, uh, OGI uh, was great. DNN was really, really good. Even this uh, ITP that I bought uh, had a 30% run. On Friday, you saw Mankind of all things, right? Uh, somebody came in for, I believe it was for the seven and a half near term calls and the stock was 550 you know and, and here's the craziest part it went from 550 and it went right back to uh the 52 week high the craziest part about it it's not like they were coming in for you know multiple sweeps one guy came in literally one guy came in fourteen thousand dollar premium on the bet and it really started taking up the stock higher and that's kind of what i be mean. pay attention to the small cap order flow uh this is the same formula out of the money calls near-term expiration the more sweeps the better but the ones that are really standing out keep an eye on so this is what i want to i want to kind of segue look at bcrx right buyers are coming in for friday uh there were three separate buyers maybe it's one guy who knows but three separate buyers came in for the March 20 calls. Why is that important? Well, the stock's at $11. Definitely keep an eye on that one. Uh, CLBS is another interesting name that came out. Uh, somebody bought uh, the March 19 expiration $5 calls. Why is that important? You know, why is that interesting? Stock closed at $2.29. So those are the names you kind of want to watch. If you guys remember last week, I talked about uh, RIGL, who actually was a mystery symbol. A buyer came in for the seven and a half calls, right? And two days later, the stock spiked up to like 650 pre-market. So these things are working. They're working very, very well. But let me talk about some names uh, that I definitely like uh, going into uh, this week. Uh, Maxim, you know, the, the craziest part about technology being weak is semiconductors are still very, very strong. Uh, Maxim looks pretty good here. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts taking out the top of this channel uh, reclaiming 52 week highs, it could start going on its next move. Um, I kind of like Boeing in a weird way, right? In a really weird, twisted way, I kind of like Boeing. Last time I liked Boeing, uh, I exploded right through the 50 day moving average. So if you look at this channel here, if Boeing can start reclaiming levels here and just keep an eye on the early option flow, if they start coming in for you know the 225, 230 calls early, especially early morning, uh, and Monday session, this thing could really go. If it starts reclaiming this whole top of the channel, you could get a move all the way back to like at least 225. So keep an eye uh, on that. Some SPAC names. SPACs have been really, really hot. BTWN, right? BTWN, I think it just needs one or two more days. If it can just get above this channel here, again, I'm not saying it's gonna go to its high, but boy, oh boy, you can see the pro that you, you could see where potentially the stock can go. I like that as well. Uh, PSAC, I've been watching for several days now. I'm still waiting for this whole channel here to reclaim. Um, I think it's a matter of time. I, I like the way the stock goes up and consolidates, goes up again. So I kind of want to watch this whole channel here. That looks good as well. Uh, on the short side, like I mentioned, I like this Akamai. I'm going to watch that. Um, I like this monster. I'm going to watch that. Uh, even Tesla. Uh, I, you know, the big macro number is going to be the 760 level. But I want to see if we can get a sneaky pivot somewhere around these little channels here. So I, I want to keep an eye and see uh, if there's any good value there as well. Other than that, let's talk about Friday's pivots uh, really, really quickly. Um, it was a pretty, you know, pretty good day here. Um, you know, I caught, you know, I caught, especially uh, Facebook was really good. But this one I missed at lunchtime, which, I, which sucks. I went to walk my dog, uh, 787 on Tesla, uh, several times it held. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, here is Tesla, right? Here's the 787. Here's the 787 right over here. 787, you know, you know, beautiful move. Went down 10 points on Tesla. Unfortunately, I missed that one. I still like this yell. Keep an eye on this yell, guys, for this week. Uh, Goose, you know, just traded right underneath $46. Didn't 
uh, didn't confirm. Uh, GameStop, nice little move on GameStop. 40, 20, uh, 40 if it builds below, can flush more. Here was GameStop, right? Here was GameStop before it reversed. So here was GameStop, took out the 40, uh, took out the 40, 20, and traded all the way down to 38, 50. Uh, nice move on GameStop. Uh, again, these SPACs have been very, very strong. Uh, this is the Goldman Sachs SPAC, 2450. Uh, 1440, 1450 needs to build. Uh, GSAH went nuts, uh, absolutely nuts. Uh, here's the 1450, and it went all the way up to uh, 1660s. Big move there. Uh, CBAT had a really, really nice move the day before. We saw a near-term uh, $10 call buyer came in, came out of a PR. Uh, 890, 90 needs to build. Here was CBAT went right to its 52-week high. Well, excuse me, went right to the top of the channel from nine to all the way to 960 uh, before it reversed here. Uh, let's see here, Amazon never got the 33.43. Uh, not a big move here at all. Kappa rejected 22 three times. Uh, you know, rallied like 40 cents before it reversed. Nothing big there, it came right back down. Uh, TLRY I still like, never got there. Here's my, you know, here's definitely my trade of the day. Uh, 266 support, if it builds below, can get hit. And again, remember, this is not even macro support. These are just in between channels. But this is my whole point. The, the the previous day, it did nothing. I had to wait for it. And it took out the previous channel here at 66. It hesitated for a little bit and then just got just absolutely destroyed uh, went all the way down to the 260 level. And then this is not even macro. This is just in between channels. Here's the macro level we have to watch. And obviously, if it gets all the way down here, you know the market uh, is going to get incredibly uh, hit there as well. So really nice trade there uh, as well. New lows, new highs. Uh, here comes 263, 263s. I actually made my last cover around the 64 area, and the stock just got murdered again. Uh, other than that, again, you know, we have to be very patient going into this week. Uh, the game plan is ready. Just remember, folks, if you want to do this for a very, very long time, it's not about what you do today, okay? It's all about what you do for tomorrow. So in terms of building a house, you don't build a house from the roof you know, to the foundation. You build it from the foundation to the roof. Guys, God bless. Stay safe. God loves you. Be happy. We only have one life to live. No regrets. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you Monday.